Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Michael Dinner from Justified City Primeval. And it is so exciting to have uh, Raylan Givens back on our screens. But I know this particular book, City Primeval, is not a Raylan Givens story in real life. So what was kind of the most exciting aspect of dropping this character into this new setting for you? Well, you know, it started I, I, some years ago. I got a call from uh, Peter Leonard, who's Elmer Leonard's son. <clears throat> and uh, Peter and the estate talked to me about if I had any interest in turning City Primeval into a show. And I started working on it, and I got a phone call one day from uh, Tim Oliphant. I was in uh, Rome, and he was shooting Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And he said, you know, Quentin and I were talking, and um, have you ever heard of City Primeval? And I think he probably heard that I was about to go out with it. I said, oh, yeah. And he said, well, uh, you know, it might make a great year at Justified. It was never in our mind to to do another year at Justified. Um, uh, you know, we thought we... Uh, stuck the landing some years ago and um, anyway we started talking about it FX was very excited about the idea and so uh, I abandoned uh, doing this as a period piece you know from you know 30 years ago to uh, to taking um, Raylan Givens and and kind of catapulting him into the story uh, it was fun it was fun to go back into the writer's room with a lot of people who had worked together before it was fun to put this character back on the screen hmm. there's something about having him here that maintains like almost a momentum of the Western, but it definitely has this, the tone of a crime drama. Was it difficult to mash those two things together? How did you work with the tone? Well, that was always the mashup in a way. I mean, even in the original series, I mean, it was kind of a postmodern neo-noir, you know, uh, Western. And, you know, Elmer Leonard started writing Westerns and then he uh, gravitated towards American crime fiction. Uh, City Primeval was one of his first, uh, you know, American uh, crime novels. Um, it's just a fun mashup to do. I mean, I remember when we were doing the original show, the first day of shooting, I was setting up a shot. We were on this farm, uh, you know, supposedly in Kentucky. And uh, it was like a showdown on a main street in a Western. And I looked over, over Tim's shoulder and there was a uh, satellite dish on the roof. And I said, well, that's the style of the show, you know. So... Justified was certainly this kind of neo-noir uh, Western and, you know, City Primeval, the original title of the book was uh, City Primeval or High Noon in Detroit. So it certainly pays homage to the Westerns that, that you know, he wrote. And um, and yet it's also this, you know, piece of crime fiction. It's, it's a fun mashup to do. Yeah, I think there's there's something about this one that feels like it has a bit more menace a lot. Like the first episode concludes with this very shocking car chase and double murder. What? What was it like going into that kind of heavy material? Well, you know, we weren't trying to do a, uh, a retrospective on Unjustified. This is a show called City Primeval. And we took this character and we and we thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting to drop him into the middle of the story? It's kind of a, I don't know, a more grown up version of the show that we did. Uh, certainly there's a sense of humor in places. It's 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 funny in places, but it's dark. And um, what I love about doing Elmore Leonard's material is there's an opportunity for the director, the writer, the actor. Um, I like to say that you don't see the joke coming, you don't see the violence coming, you don't see the emotion coming, sometimes within the same breath. So to do that, to, and to do this story where he is a fish out of water in Detroit, Detroit's a, a character in the piece, or our version of Detroit, and um, it was fun to do. And it also pays homage, I think, to, to Elmore, who we loved working with. Yeah, and I think a lot of the darkness, too, comes from the villain, uh, which Justified always had amazing villains. Uh, and this one is no different with, with Boyd Holbrook's character. Uh, but he's a different adversary. He's totally a, a wild card. He's this force of nature. And what does that type of character facing him off with Raylan give you? What does that unlock? Look, we knew we had some big sh shoes to fill. We had some great villains over six years. Um, but this is a different villain in the sense that... Um, with the other Boyd, with Boyd Crowder, um, you know that was a character that they there was an understand there was a understanding between the two of them. They grew up mining coal together. You know Boyd Holbrook's character, you know Manzel in this piece is uncorked, unpredictable, and dangerous. I, I think dangerous to Raylan because we see a Raylan who's ten years older. We see him as kind of this walking anachronism. We see him having lost maybe a quarter of a step. Uh, you know, he, he's older in the world and, uh, and, and the world, 
the world's changed a little bit for him at least. Um, and I think what makes this character dangerous is the unpredictability, as you said. Did Boyd come in with that kind of characterization from the get-go? Because there's so many, I think, possibilities for the way you could play that role. He he brought his own thing to it, though certainly it was on the page. I mean, this is a very interesting character that was on the page. Uh, we had a, uh, you know, the great thing about Elmore is that when you adapt him, um, you can kind of take the ball and run with it, but you also have to know when to get out of the way. And so, uh, you know, certainly there are aspects of this character, the, the character they created, but that novel was written 40 years ago. So um, we had to play with it and, 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 and make it our own. And then I think Boyd made it his own. Yeah. And in addition to the two of them facing off, I, I would almost say it's really a, a trio um, because you have Carolyn there and they are so intertwined with their stories, which is feels a little bit different for, for a justified story. So what was it like working with that trio together? Look, we always knew it was a three-hander, that it was those two characters and Anshadu Ellis's character. And everybody's wor everybody has their own story and their own secrets and they're working an angle. And um, I love the relationship between... Uh, between Carolyn and, and, and Raylan. I think it, there's a certain kind of organic, you know, honesty to it. And, um, you know, three powerhouse actors. I, it was, to, to direct the three of them was really fun. And then I think also, you know, we had other great actors in this piece. Um, I think in a way, Carolyn is, you know, part of Detroit or Detroit's part of her. And the same thing with Vondi Curtis Hall, who ha has a certain weight and gravitas that he brings to this he's kind of the spine of the whole of the whole uh story yeah well you said before you know you thought you sticked the landing for justified which you certainly did um and now we have this uh, other amazing journey are there other kind of Raylan stories that you're looking at will you attempt to stick the landing yet again look dave andron my my partner in this we used to say that that we felt this was the second act of of Raylan's life. That we spent the first act in in the hills of in the hollers of Kentucky, and uh, we got to tell this story at a you know at a place in his life when the road in front of him is a lot shorter than the road behind, and um, we have a a little bit of a surprise ending, uh, you know, in this eight episode uh, series that um, we didn't really do to set up a future story, but there is a future. I, I think there's a third act. And if, if FX and Sony decide that they want to do another chapter, I know that there's two actors who want to do it and a couple of showrunners who want to do it. So we'll see what happens. But, but if, if, if this is the second landing, you know, I think we stuck it and there could be a third landing. It depends on how life works out, you know? Yeah. How, how much of the aesthetic and the history of Justified did you feel like you had to either incorporate or ignore like what was the relationship there well i think we did a little bit of a dance you know mm -hmm. um i think that this looks um a little different than the original series like i said i think it's a little bit more grown up a little edgier uh, uh even more noirish and darker you know though you could say that that was kind of southern fried noir um we had to be aware of what came before but we didn't want to be slavish i mean and whether that's in the look of the show and the composition and the lighting in the music. Um, we wanted this to be its own thing, but also, you know, Raylan comes onto the screen and he brings his baggage with him. So certainly that exists within this new world. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, if there is another dance to be done, we'll greatly look forward to it. Uh, but whatever the case may be, it's a wonderful job with, with City Primeval. So thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you.